Okay, today we're going to look at how one could make Sankey diagrams or flow diagrams using matplotlib and Python 3 in Jupyter Notebooks um, or Jupyter Labs online. Now, when we talk about Sankey plots, we mean something that looks like this, or at least many times this is what we want. Something where there's a flow from categories that are on the left to categories on the right, where the width of what's flowing between them reflects the relative size of what's being moved between these categories. And you see all these like really fancy plots that look really nice. And so you think to yourself, like, let's just make something like that in Python, which we've already used. And we've been using matplotlib. And so you can then search for matplotlib Sankey diagram and then you find and you say, oh great, this is what it is. It exists, we can make this, and you scroll down and then you see something that looks like this, which isn't maybe quite as beautiful as many of these things that we see here. And the reason is that this plot was originally invented to show things like energy flow and mass flow for engineering. And so it's very well suited to that and cycles between different aspects of some sort of device or system that we're working with. But oftentimes this isn't what we want to do. If this is what you want to do, you're in luck. It's built in directly to matplotlib. And so, great, we can do that. But let's assume that we want to make something that looks a little bit more like this. What can we do? Well, we could write a bunch of code and figure out how to do it ourselves, or we could use a different kind of library and maybe that would also work. But one of the nice things about Python is that it is used widely and there's many people out there that will write different functions that they will publish and that we can use. For instance, there is this PySankey on GitHub, which somebody has written already and allows us to make Sankey diagrams things like this using just matplotlib. And I know that from looking through the code and here it gives us a few examples of how this works and how you would like use this class that you have PySankey and then you have like this uh, invocation of it here, which would give us this down here. And so as long as we import this or at least have the code in our own file, we can use it. So how could we do this? Well, there is a couple different ways, but let's just say for now that what we want to do is just use the code as is. So I'm gonna click on this folder, and then inside of here we have the sankey.py. And here we have all the code, so I'm just gonna highlight and copy this. It will also be in our assignment so that it's there as well, I think, if you want to use it, or at least I'll have a link to it in case you find this a little bit confusing. But this is all the code that's gonna do it for us. So you can see that this is quite long and it would take a while to figure out how to write this, probably beyond what we want to do right now. And in fact, it's certainly beyond, unless you happen to be really into Python and you wanna see how it's done or write your own for that challenge. We'll just paste this into this cell here. And what this does is it sets up a function, which we saw last time, and that function is Sankey. And then it says all the things that it could accept, and then it'll run through and do all of this. So in order to get that loaded in, we say go. And now we have access to the Sankey function. What we need to do then is supply it data to plot. And the question is, what kind of data? Well, I think something that could be of interest is to plot what happened on the Titanic. It has a nice flow. I mean, it's a little sad, but it has a nice flow in terms of the data, because what we can look at is we can look at casualties. And so if I look here, I have broken apart by women, men, children, and also first, second, and third class, as well as crew. And so one of the things we might do is think about in the Titanic disaster, who suffered the most or who had the greatest rate of survival was it women or children or men? Or perhaps we can think about it by first, second, and third class as well as crew. And I think the latter one is maybe more interesting. So if we go back and we look at this Sankey class, what we can see at the top is there's this sort of 
comment here that tells us what we're going to expect. We need on the left a NumPy array that is the labels for the leftmost category. Then we need something that says right, and that is going to be a NumPy array for the labels on the right hand side. Then we have left weight and right weight, and the left weight tells us the weight of the lines that are going to come from the left and go to the right, and the right weight tells us the weight of the lines that end up on the right hand side and then connect back to the left. And we'll see how the, all this works. You can see we can control the color with a color dictionary if we want. We're not going to actually do that right now. Um, and then we can also sort of specify the order of the labels we want things to be. We can specify what the aspect ratio is going to be, things like that. For us, let's just get the basic one working. And so what we need is a NumPy array of labels for the left-hand side, a NumPy array of labels for the right-hand side, and then something that tells us the weights of things on the left and the weights of things on the right. So there again are a couple of different ways we could do this. We could set up a um, Excel sheet and read it in so that we have NumPy arrays from there. And then we could uh, use that. I think something else we could do is we could look to this data and type it in. And if we did that, here is kind of what it would look like. We have the class first, second, third, and crew. First, second, third, and crew. Survive, 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 died, 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 died. And so we're going in and we're saying first class, who survived? Well, there were children in first class, six of them survived. There were children in, or women in first class, 140 of them survived. There was women in, or men in first class, and 57 of them survived. And so when we total that, we'll get 203. When we think about first class people who died, then we have the children in first class, none of which died. The women in first class, four of which died. And then the men in first class, 118 of which died. And then if we total that up, we get 122. And so we can repeat that over and over as we have seen here. What we're making in the world of Python or in we have seen in pandas is a data frame where I have columns that are of exactly the same length. And then we know something about the class they came from what their status was, and how many people belong to that class and status. Again, we could import this directly in, but let's just go ahead and type it in this time just so we can see what's going to go on. And so I want data. Let's call it class. And you can see that if I use class, it turned bold green. And that's because class is a special word in Python, similar to how if I type print, I get a green word, whereas if I type something else like uh, variable name, it stays sort of this black. And so this syntax highlighting is telling us we shouldn't use class because that has a different name. So let's call this P class for uh, passenger class. And then what we want is to supply this labels. So it's going to be a string, so I need the quotation marks. And this is going to be first and then second and then third, and then uh, fourth. And so we have these classes. They're actually going to repeat again. So if we go back to thinking about what this data looked like, then we see that we want to repeat the class first, second, third, and then I guess instead of fourth, it should be crew, first, second, third, and then crew. And paste it again so that we've just repeated it twice. And we don't need this last comma. And now I have a list that says first, second, third crew, first, second, third crew. That's our class. Then we have the passenger status. What happened to them? Well, basically, if we think back to, again, the data that we were looking at, we want to say survived four times and then died four times. And so let's go ahead and do that. Survived and then we need four of these. I've already written one. And so let's just go ahead and say there, there, there. And then we need died. And then I need this three more times as well. And again, there are other ways to do this in Python. So I don't have to do so much copying and pasting. Get rid of that last comma and then do this. But again, we're trying to use the most basic way of doing this that we can or the simplest way. 
And then we need the counts. So how about passenger counts? And what I want is the numbers that we had before in a list. And so we're just making a list of each of these. I can go here and since I've totaled them up, why don't I just go ahead and use that as a list. I'll copy it, paste it in. And then what I need to do is basically separate each one of these with a comma. And when I'm done with this, what I'll have are three different lists, one of which tells me how many or what the classes will be in our plot on the left, what the classes will be for the plot on the right, and then another thing that tells me how many people there are in each of these divisions. And now we're ready. Basically, if I go back up to the Sankey function, then it says up here, that I need to put in left, right, left weight, right weight if I want to draw something like this. So let's just see how this works. I need left equals something, right equals something, left weight equals something, right weight equals something. So let's go down and do that. Sankey, um, this is left equals P class and then uh, right equals p status so that is the left and right categories p status and then what we would do is also type in uh, left weight and that equals p counts and right weight equals p counts i spelled one of these wrong i can see that right now uh, there we go now, what does this look like when I hit go? It looks like this. I have the total numbers of crew, some of which died, most of them did, and some of which survived. In third class, most of them died and some survived. In second class, it's almost even that maybe just a little more than half of them died. But by the time we get to first class, fewer of them died than survived. And so you can see that in addition to the traditional gender split that we see on the Titanic, sort of the women and children first that is stuck in our mind, there was also a major divide amongst the different classes on the ship. Okay, let's think about what happened up here. Well, this worked even though we had said that up here it's asking for a numpy array and really the reason is that it thinks it wants a numpy array is because it thinks you're going to read it in as a pandas data frame which will give you a numpy array out but really all it needs is a list and so that's why we're able to use lists in this case of course you could have made each one of these a numpy array and there's nothing wrong with that if we had said take this list and convert it to a numpy array it will have no trouble using that whatsoever and we'll get the same plot what would happen if instead of the P counts here, well, let's say we had a different um, set of values. So here's the NumPy array that we have for the P counts. And the reason I might do that is now I can scale this using just simple uh, math. What if I had made the P counts or the P counts one third for the left weight, meaning that everything over here is going to be a third the size of what's over there. Now you can see this is how this is working. If I have a left and a right weight specified that's different, it will scale what's happening on the left and the right accordingly. Of course, in this case, we don't want that. We want to keep the scale the same, but just so you know, that's what's happening there. What else can we do? Well, we could set up, um, like I said, colors. We could change the aspect ratio. We could specify the order that the left labels occur in the diagram. And so, and so you could play around with understanding how each of these work if you want. There's one disadvantage to using these sorts of user-created functions that are just on GitHub. I mean, the, the clear advantage is that this exists and it works, and that's quite nice for us. The disadvantage is that there's not as much documentation as there would be for the matplotlib Sankey diagram. And so you have to go in here and try to read up on how this works. For instance, I could go back into here and then 
uh, try to look at maybe the different things that they're using here or go all the way back and maybe look at the readme and do a little bit of reading about how it thinks this is working but even then the documentation is a little slim and so it's going to be a lot of looking at these examples that they've used going back and changing stuff in your own implementation but at least i think at this point we have an idea of how this might work what we need are arrays or lists or something like that where we can assign values to the left and the right and then we can assign weights for the lines to the left and the right and then we get a nice flow diagram like what we were getting here when we just googled this word and so with that i hopefully you can start to see the power of having something that's um, so well used out there in terms of python where you can just borrow what other people have used to create the sort of plots that you're interested in and with that i guess we're done